Okay, so <clears throat> I'm now going to just focus on parts of the war. But what I want to do is that, um, you know, you'll read the text, and I just want to highlight certain things because obviously being that this is a world war and things were happening on many fronts it can just start to become confusing and um certainly deserves more than one brief lecture to understand uh so as i usually do i'm going to just kind of highlight points that i think i want you to focus on and hope hopefully already i'm breaking you uh, you away from this hollywood version of world war ii that that's uh I addressed in my first lecture um, is to see that World War II had uh, many different aspects to it and um, things to think about and to learn from that are outside of our kind of oversimplified narratives that we've uh, seemed to to take in as a culture okay and when I'm saying that I'm not even actually just accusing um, Hollywood of that, but I'd even say in the public school system, and mainly because I think the textbooks highlight a few things, and they seem to just kind of go over what I was mentioning earlier, and not really talking much about stuff. So, in any case, um, you know, all I want to say about the Blitzkrieg, the Blitz Blitzkrieg is talked about a lot, Lightning War. Okay, and you usually do talk about that in public schools. You know, the offensive military tactic uh, of using airplanes and tanks and infantry against the enemy. And this was a really successful uh, offensive technique that the Germans uh, were doing. So the textbook talks about a new kind of warfare. Um, so with World War One, right, we saw technology um, on an unprecedented level change the nature of war well by world war ii we're going to see and sadly as we you know end with the nuclear uh, bomb question or situation that leaves us with a question should i say um much of industrialization the results of industrialization that we talked about um and all this ingenuity that came out of the scientific revolution and and, and ideas are going to become manifest into killing machines that and ways to kill human beings that we've never seen before in history and so um, this kind of tactic was new and very effective um, and then the textbook kind of briefly goes into the Vichy regime of France um, this is this is a, a regime and a part of the history uh, that um, I myself feel like I would like to explore more and unfortunately is not uh, heavily um, discussed which is when uh, um, German soldiers marched into Paris and basically um, took over and had the French, many French leaders collaborate with the Nazis. And so you had a, a part of, uh, you, you had France that was militarily occupied, and then the other part, which was fully collaborated um, by a, an actual war uh, 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 vet, war hero from uh, uh, Pétain, uh, um, I think I'm saying his name a little bit wrong, um, uh, uh, from World War One. And they don't really explore, well, how could they justify this collaboration? And um, I'm going to show you a, um, a little clip uh, later on of him speaking. And essentially, it was unifying around the threat of communism. And keep in mind that the Nazis made their whole point to be rapidly anti-communist, anti-Bolshevik. So they, they often refer to it as Bolshevism. Another term for the Russian communists, okay? And so, um, I think that that's also something to be talked about, was this major fear uh, of communism. So we've talked about that, right? Uh, um, and, and so here we're seeing that being used as a way to justify saying, hey, we can be French nationalists, and it's, it's us as Europeans 
together with our Germans uh, 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 friends against the evils of uh, threats of Bolshevism. Okay, so you have that aspect. So that's just one thing. Um, I'll just point out there on that. Um, and so you did have resistance, though. Uh, there, there was a French resistance, and then later we'll talk about that later. De Gaulle was going to be one of the uh, figures to lead that and, and eventually be a major hero in French history. Um, but uh, then you have, of course, the Battle of Britain. And it was mentioning that, you know, in the text, that Hitler hoped that Britain would accept Germany's domination and agree to negotiate a peace. Um, and so basically the British wouldn't, appear, there, there was, there were no leadership there to, to collaborate like with the French. Um, and so, uh, uh, basically they resisted and had to take on this, uh, uh, military machine and the British, uh, suffered quite a bit for that. Okay. Um, but then also the British were able to give, um, put up a good fight as well. So again, I'm, I'm briefly just kind of going over some highlights and then I want to kind of go back into discussing some other points. Um, the invasion of the Soviet Union um, and discuss the postponement that um, basically Mussolini is the real founder of fascism and um, maybe somewhat of like the guy to to influence or, or, or look up to from Hitler's point of view, maybe at one point, but he certainly found Mussolini to be a major nuisance uh, uh, in terms of just, you know, the, the Italian, the Italians and, 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 and Mussolini's regime uh, tried to expand their territories with little success. And as you read in the textbook, for Germany, they saw that basically they couldn't afford to let Italy lose, but it, it, it was kind of bogging down the Germans to focus on things that they didn't want to initially in the war. Hitler really wanted to make his focus on the Soviet Union, as you were seeing. Um, and I think this is one of those, this is one of those points that I'll keep drilling into you that is not talked about an American discourse on World War II and much in uh, World War uh, II uh, in the history classes in high school is the real focus was the anti-Soviet Union to end the Bolshevik, the Jewish Bolshevik problem that Hitler was referring to. Okay. And, um, and so basically the Germans had to kind of, again, clean, uh, 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 help fix uh, the problems they thought with um, Mussolini before they could get to that. Um, so here's a map kind of showing where uh, things are at with Nazi occupations, uh, where you have allied uh, uh, with Germany and allied powers, and then neutral nations, okay? And so, um, you know, this is kind of giving you uh, a feel. So here's Stalingrad, which we're going to talk about a little bit more. Okay, so that's a long way to go. Um, all right. So the invasion of the Soviet Union was, it started off as a major success. As you saw, it read in the textbook, it was a major, major military campaign going in to really do damage. And um, part of it, it's not talked about in the textbook, but... Um, you know, had Hitler not been so race-based, like his racism really blinded him to a lot of other potentials that he could have um, utilized. For one, the local population uh, in the in the like like Ukraine, as it mentioned, uh, they were really uh, wore out by Stalin. And I mean, this is something that I actually just briefly want to say. I've met a lot of. Uh, uh, people who lived in the former Soviet Union. Certain parts of the Soviet Union were, were, were better uh, equipped and life was better than other parts. And so, you know, as I always mention, you know, in LA, there's Compton and there's Beverly Hills, right? Okay, so in the Soviet Union, the concept may have been equality for all, but certain provinces really got the short end of the stick and other, prov in, in other parts of the Soviet Union, um, life was much better. 
Uh, I've met uh, people who lived in Moscow and actually thought their quality of life wasn't so bad, you know, and they weren't that political, so they, they weren't into anything controversial, and they seemed to have like a semi-normal life. Um, then I don't think I've ever met anybody from the Ukraine that actually liked, uh, had anything positive to say. And Stalin could have utilized a lot of local discontent. He could have posed himself as probably, I mean, I mean sorry, Hitler, when Hitler invaded uh, Soviet Union, he, he probably could have posed himself as a liberator and really met with um, some helpfulness and some collaboration. But his whole point was to uh, very anti-Slavic. I mean, his racism wasn't just towards Jews. He had a racial hierarchy, and Slavs were also seen as low on the list, okay? And so these people who are already treated very bad are feeling the effects of famines uh, uh, and, and, and some problems under the Soviet Union are then going to be met by ferociousness um, by the German invasion. And um, basically you're going to have the Germans overextend themselves. So they're going to start off really strong, but their, their atrocities are going to really alienate them. And you're going to really see the Russians uh, um, pick up some resolve. And, um, and then that fatal winter kicked in and it wouldn't have happened. Remember if, if Hitler could have went at the time he wanted, um, he probably wouldn't have got stuck there. Mussolini in a sense helped the Russians by forcing Hitler to, to have to waste his time somewhere else and to postpone his original plans. And so by the time he gets in there, um, he doesn't have time on his side. And time is what's going to give uh, the Soviets their needed edge to, to, to kind of regroup and take on this really powerful war machine. And um, you can imagine these Germans were going in with uh, gear not prepared for a Russian winter. I mean, uh, talk about really some karma. I mean, uh, karma is not even maybe the fair word to say. But the bottom line is, is that as these guys came in victorious and just tearing through uh, Russian cities, the winter came on them with some, some real shock. And, um, and the resistance there uh, was going to be met. And so um, this is one aspect. Something else that's not fully addressed in this text that I just want to say, and I don't want to sound sympathetic to Stalin, but I, I think it's fair to like point out. Stalin made a prediction when he was industrializing Russia prior to World War II. He would, did it in a very harsh way, to say the least. And, um, you know, he made this almost like insanely fast-paced kind of uh, push towards industrialization and he said almost prophetically if we don't industrialize and have ourselves ready um, we'll be destroyed by the um, bourgeois uh, forces in other words kind of invoking what happened in the allied um, invasion to russia uh, after world war one he's basically saying if we don't get ourselves together if we don't industrialize we will get invaded we know we're going to get invaded again and we need to be ready and in fact, he was able to do that. And so Stalin, on one hand, he was starving a lot of the population. He also purged himself of a lot of um, uh, seasoned military vets that were going to be a problem for him in World War II, uh, prior to World War II, when he did all these great purges. But his industrialization plan was successful in actually helping um, create an infrastructure for the Russians to be able to get through uh, um, this invasion. So I just kind of wanted to point that out as well. Um, I hate these pictures because it's just, it's depressing. You know, there's no way around it. I don't care who the bad guy or good guy. It's all humans. Just, ugh. And then you see, you know, for Russians, these are kind of a lot of the memories that they have of World War uh, II and um, what happened here. So um, just keep that in mind. I'm going to end here and we'll go to the next section.